Happy Friday, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Daily Office. We're morning prayer. We're glad that you're with us. A reading from John. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for such the Father seeks to worship him. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And now together, the Venite. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. We have a couple of appointed psalms this morning. We're going to start out with Psalm 110 in unison. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord will send the scepter of your power out of Zion, saying, rule over your enemies round about you. Princely state has been yours from the day of your birth, and the beauty of holiness have I begotten you like dew from the womb of the morning. The Lord has sworn, and he will not recant, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord who is at your right hand will smite kings in the days of his wrath. He will rule over the nations. He will heap high the corpses. He will smash heads over the whole wide earth. He will drink from the brook beside the road. Therefore, he will lift high his head. Psalm 111. Hallelujah, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in him. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Psalm 112. Hallelujah, happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desires of the wicked will perish. Psalm 113. Hallelujah, give praise to you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who sits enthroned on high but stoops to behold the heavens and the earth? He takes up the weak out of the dust and he lifts up the poor from the ashes. He sets them with the princes, with princes of his people. He makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Esther. On the day that Haman was hanged on the gallows, King Ahasuerus gave to Queen Esther the house of Haman, the enemy of the Jews, and Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told him what was to her, what he was to her. Then the king took off his signet ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. So Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. Then Esther spoke again to the king. She fell at his feet, weeping and pleading with him to avert the evil design of Haman the Agagite, the Agagite who, and the plot that he had devised against the Jews. The king held out the golden scepter to Esther, and Esther rose and stood before the king. She said, if it pleases the king, and if I have won his favor, and if the thing seems right before the king, and I have his approval, let an order be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman, son of Hamadetha the Agagite, who, which he wrote, giving orders to destroy the Jews, who are in all the provinces of the king. For how can I bear to see the calamity that is coming on my people? Or how can I bear to see the destruction of my kindred? And the king, Asahurus, said to Queen Esther and to the Jew Mordecai, See, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and they have hanged him on the gallows because he plotted to lay hands on the Jews. You may write as you please with regard to the Jews in the name of the king and seal it with the king's ring. For an edict written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's ring cannot be revoked. Then Mordecai went out from the presence of the king wearing royal robes of blue and white and with great golden crown and a mantle of fine linen and purple, while the city of Susa shouted and rejoiced. For the Jews there was light and gladness, joy and honor. In every province and in every city, wherever the king's command and his edict came, there was gladness and joy among the Jews, a festival and a holiday. Furthermore, many of the peoples of the country professed to be Jews because the fear of the Jews had fallen among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First canticle this morning is the second song of Isaiah. Together. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading comes from Acts. Now after these things had been accomplished, Paul resolved in the Spirit to go through Macedonia and Achaia, and then go on to Jerusalem. And he said, after I have gone there, I must also see Rome. So he sent two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, to Macedonia, while he himself stayed for some time longer in Asia. Now about that time, no little disturbance broke out concerning the way. A man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought no little business to the artisans. These he gathered together with the workers of the same trade and said, Men, you know that we get our wealth from this business. You also see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost the whole of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and drawn away a considerable number of people by saying that gods made with hands are not gods. And there is danger not only that this trade of ours may come into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will be scorned, and she will be deprived of her majesty and brought all Asia and the world to worship her. When they heard this, they were enraged and shouted, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. The city was filled with confusion, and the people rushed together to the theater, dragging with them Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians who were Paul's traveling companions. And Paul wished to go into the crowd, but the disciples would not let him. Even some officials of the province of Asia, who were friendly to him, 
sent him a message urging him not to venture into the theater. Meanwhile, some were shouting one thing, some another, for the assembly was in confusion, and most of them did not know why they had come together. Now, some of the crowd had gave instructions to Alexander, who several of the Jewish leaders had pushed forward, and Alexander motioned for silence and tried to make a defense before the people. But when they recognized that he was a Jew, for about two hours, all of them shouted in unison, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. But when the town clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Citizens of Ephesus, who is there that does not know that the city of the Ephesians is the temple keeper of the great Artemis and of the statue that fell from heaven? Since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be be quiet and do nothing rash. You have brought these men here who are neither temple robbers or blasphemers of our goddess. If therefore Demetrius and the artisans with him have a complaint against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges there against one another. If there is anything further you want to know, it must be settled in the regular assembly. For we are in danger of being charged with rioting today since there is no one that we can give to justify this commotion. When he had said this, he dismissed the assembly. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Dignuses is our next canticle. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sisters and brothers, let us pray the words our Savior taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, you led your holy apostles to ordain ministers in every place. Grant that your church, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, may choose suitable persons for the ministry of the word and sacrament, and may uphold them in their work for the extension of your kingdom, through him who is the shepherd and bishop of our souls, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went up not to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now a prayer for mission of the church. 
O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, hear the intentions, the intercessions, the joys and the sorrows that we have on our heart. Be with us always. Guide us in every decision that we make. Keep us mindful of others that our decisions may affect. Most of all, keep us faithful to your teachings and never let us be parted from you. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you again for joining us for morning prayer. Join us again Saturday morning as we continue the daily office. We appreciate you spending time with us, tuning in on our uh, YouTube our, our, or Facebook channels. And please always make your comments and um, be nice. Remember, leave the world a better place this evening than you found it this morning. Love God, love your neighbor, and the world will be a different place. Thank you. See you tomorrow.